Welcome to the Oxen Group Nightly. Hey guys, my name is David Ristow. I'm the founder and CEO of the Oxen Group. And tonight we're going to be looking at uh, the weekly recap of what happened last week in the market as well as our day on Friday. We'll be reviewing our position in RealD, ticker RLD, Polo Ralph Lauren, RL, our entry into Activ Activision Blizzard, our long-term rating on Take-Two Interactive. We'll be talking about our new and improved weekly webinars that we're really excited about, and we're also going to be looking into our forecasts for next week. Today on Friday, the uh, markets had a pretty stellar day again as we rebounded from lows and moved higher. Um, the big story of the day was definitely the unemployment rate um, as it fell below estimates. Uh, however, some of the um, positive impact from the unemployment rate was curbed by uh, less jobs being created than expected in December. JDS Uniphase and Tyson were very strong earnings on Friday as both stocks beat EPS estimates and guided well. JDS Uniphase helped out the telecommunications industry while Tyson Chicken was positive for the poultry industry. Taking a closer look at the unemployment rate, uh, the number dropped to 9% in December and that was its lowest number since um, before 2009. And if we look at the chart, we can see a real nice downward channel that's starting to form for the unemployment rate. And it's definitely positive for things to move at a quicker rate in the coming months. However, that theory is a little bit curved by the number of jobs that were created in December. And there was a disappointing number out from the report as only 36,000 jobs were created in December. It was in the lowest number in four months. And that's left some analysts wondering where are new jobs going to come from. While the unemployment rate was able to beat the estimates at 9.5%, coming in at 9.0%, that jobs created did create some of the early uh, problems in the market. As we look at the closer chart of what happened in the market, you can see in the first um, half of the day up until uh, lunchtime, you know, the market was digesting the unemployment numbers as well as um, some of the impact from the Egyptian problems. And the market was bouncing around, sometimes up, but mostly moving towards the downside. After lunchtime, though, lower volume came into the market and bulls bought up on the dips. And as we see the market continue to do this time and time again, every time we come into a dip, the market buys it up and it's really creating just a very bullish sentiment in the market. And there's really no reason to expect any bearish movement in the coming future as long as we continue to buy on these dips, even on poor news, such as was the case with the jobs report. One of our winners for Friday was Real D Incorporated. Uh, the company came out with earnings on Thursday evening and after hours. Um, and while earnings were disappointing, uh, the market was buying up uh, the stock despite a downgrade from JP Morgan, as well as missing revenue estimates and EPS estimates. We took advantage of an early morning gain and were able to exit the uh, last one-fourth of our position for a 3% gain, and we were able to average out for 1.3% gain. This was a quite a, a nice gain for us considering the stock was pretty bearish throughout the week leading into earnings and had a very negative report. And so we were lucky to escape with a 1.3% gain there. Um, we're looking at uh, Ralph Lauren now, and this was our great position for the day. Um, we got into Ralph Lauren in the middle of the week at a 105, in the high 105 area. And we're hoping we can continue to look like this guy um, as we were able to exit the first half at 110 for 4% gain. And we're looking to exit the rest of the position on Tuesday. The really bullish sign on Ralph Lauren, however, was that the stock was able to break its 50-day moving average and really could be headed to 115 and higher uh, before earnings. As we were talking about on Thursday evening in our last Oxygen Group Nightly, the 109.70 area was the real breaking point. If the stock could get above that, then it was definitely going to be able to move much higher as that was the resistance level on the 50-day moving average as we've highlighted here. If we look at two, if we, excuse me, we look at Friday's um, chart, we see that the stock was able to break that 109 level. And once it broke it, you can see on the candlestick that the, the movement was just stellar, just bounced right off that resistance level and is gaining a lot of support. And as we draw the line from that bottom that came earlier in January up to the current level, we can see that the stock is probably going to move to at least 115, if not higher, on Tuesday. The concerning factor would be that the RSI is now at a 63.67 level, but that still is yet not as high as 
It has been in the past, and it shows that it has the ability to move to around the 70 to 72 range before it really starts to get much resistance, which would take us to around the 115 level, which is where we're hoping to get to by Tuesday. On Friday, we also entered a new position in Activision Blizzard. Uh, this is a company that makes games like Call of Duty and the World of Warcraft line. Uh, we're hoping for a 3 to 5% growth to the upside on this stock as it's been pretty much negative to neutral over the last couple months um, despite having EPS growth of 170% in the last year. And they're reporting earnings on Wednesday evening and we think there's a lot of upside for this stock. First of all, you've got Electronic Arts that came out um, this past week with really solid earnings and beating estimates and buying back shares, guiding higher. Things are looking solid in the video game industry. And then you've got, on for Activision specifically, the Call of Duty Black Ops release. The game made over $1 billion in the last quarter and sold 18% more games in the first week than Modern Warfare 2. Yet, the EPS estimates for Activision Blizzard are showing only a 0 0.02 increase year over year. On top of the Call of Duty Black Ops release, the company also in the last quarter released World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft Cataclysm. The game sold 3.3 million copies in the first day alone, breaking a single day record. These two games alone should really boost that Activision earnings report for the quarter four. And we're expecting a lot of positive movement into earnings as buyers start to buy up, expecting a great report on Wednesday. And we're looking to get out before the earnings actually do come out for the majority of the position hopefully making 3 to 5%. Also on Friday, we got into a new long-term rating. Um, we initiated coverage of Take-Two Interactive, the ticker is TTWO, and we have a buy rating on this stock. I really like this stock a lot, and there's a lot of upside for it. The price target is $24, and we have a buy below $18.50 and a sell above $26. So at its current price, selling at a low $14, we're expecting a lot of positive movement in the long term for the stock over the next year to two years. Um, and we have a free preview actually available. We usually have these long-term ratings specifically for our premium members, but we're going to show this one for free um, to all of our um visitors on the website and you can check that out at www.theoxengroup.com and it's the very first um, article on the page there and one of the real key things that we like about take to interactive as a quick snippet is just that this stock for the first time in 2010 was able to maintain profitability despite releasing a grand theft auto game and this is the first time the company's ever done this, that they've been able to get into the black without a Grand Theft Auto release. And it's showing a great diversification of the company as well as them leveraging their opportunities with the Grand Theft Auto game and making it the same type of impact in other games. Um, and they had great releases of Red Dead Redemption and NBA 2K11 in 2010. And we think that this sort of path for the company is going to continue to happen and they're going to have great releases in 2011, 2012, and beyond, including a Grand Theft Auto V release, hopefully coming in 2012. And you can check out more of that at www.theoxengroup.com. Into next week, uh, we're going to end this weekend with a weekly webinar. These are uh, webinars for our premium members only. This is going to be the very first weekly webinar that we're going to ever do. And if you'd like to take advantage of these webinars, you need to go to theoxengroup.com and sign up for a premium membership there. Um, th this week's webinar is going to be all about how to maximize an Oxen Group membership despite having a day job. Um, a lot of people don't want to trade and invest at a high frequency if they have another job. But we're going to talk about how you can really maximize the 75% accuracy and the over 100% gains that the Ox Group is able to maintain on a yearly basis while still having a day job, sitting behind a desk, and being in meetings, and being able to still to pay attention to the market. We've set up a system where you can do both. And we're going to talk all about how that is possible in our weekly webinar for our premium members. Currently, the Oxen Group is holding uh, positions in Ruth, uh, in Finera, Activision Blizzard, and we have a half position in Ralph Lauren. And moving into next week, we're hoping for Ruth to really take a step forward. The stock has been pretty much dogging it um, throughout the last couple of weeks before earnings that are expected to come out on February 18th. We're expecting a nice gain into earnings and hopefully some of that momentum will start to take place next week. In Finera, uh, a stock that we lost over 25% after earnings um, on is really starting to make a move back. The stock closed 
um, well above 850 on Friday, and it was just trading at below at the very bottom of seven um, just a couple weeks back. So this stock has made a great move, and we're able, we were able to exit a third of the position for a nine percent loss. And we're hoping that the stock can move into the nine range over the next week or two, and we can exit the rest of the position for close to neutral and maybe some gains even. And this is a great um, comeback for Inferno. We're very excited about that. We're also holding our Activision Blizzard position, as we talked about earlier, and the half position in Ralph Lauren. Moving into next week, we're pretty bullish still. I mean, the market continues to buy on every dip that we see. And until we don't see that trend continue, there's really no reason to expect a very bear run. Uh, coming into next week, the economic calendar is a little bit weaker than this past week with housing starts, building permits, um, PPI, CPI, some of those things coming out. So the economic calendar will not really have as great of an impact, but we're going to start moving into a different sector of earnings that I am actually more bullish on than I've been on any other part of the earnings calendar whatsoever. We're getting into retail and we're getting into solar. Uh, retail, anything related to the consumer has been really hot in this um, earning season and the consumer has been spending their money again and we're going to start to see a lot more of these retail earnings come out and I think that's going to have a really positive impact on the market and take it even higher. I know it sounds crazy but the market should move higher as more and more positive retail earnings release. This week we've got Ralph Lauren, we've got Coca-Cola and we've got a really hot slew of solar earnings that I think are going to be outstanding as we got some of that early sneak peek from MEMC Electronics. Ticker is WFR. That's going to wrap us up for this week. We hope you had a great week with us, and we're looking forward to next week. As always, check us out at www.oxengroup.com or visit us on our Seeking Alpha page at the Oxen Group there. You can call us at 1-800-709-1160 at any time, ask us any questions, or email us at contact at the Oxen Group.com.